Tally Ho Flight Nerds, this is Ben Johnson from FlightNerdAirForce.com. Uh, we're about to create a series of videos for you, super aviation nerdy stuff, about the six pack. Now for most of the world, for you non-nerdy types, a six pack might be something that happens at the gym. But for us aviation nerdy types, the six pack is something very different. It's the instruments, the six instruments that sit uh, top center of the uh, instrument panel inside an airplane. And they're the instruments that we use the most when we are flying the airplane, helping us to go where we're going to go and fly the way we want to fly. Uh, and you might ask yourself, why would we want to uh, know this information? If you're not the kind of person who's going to be flying an airplane yourself, why would you want to know this? Uh, and actually, it's great just for scientific, if you're just nerdy like me and you just love to uh, know the science behind all these kind of things, it really does help you understand the relationship uh, of the science going on behind airplanes and flying. But also, if you ever wanted to get into flying flight simulators, uh, this is great information for you to understand how the simulator works and why the airplane flies the way it does on the simulator. So I hope this will be great information for you. Uh, today, we're gonna talk a bit about what the six pack is in general, and then in upcoming videos, we're gonna cover each of those individual instruments in and of themselves. So our instrument six pack, it includes these six instruments kind of inside this box on the instrument panel right here inside our Cessna 172. Uh, and it includes the airspeed indicator, which tells us how fast we're flying in terms of airspeed. Uh, it also includes our attitude indicator, which helps us know if we are climbing, descending, or turning to the left or the right. It includes our altimeter, which tells us how high we are flying. It includes our turn slip indicator, which helps us know if we're making uh, good turns and if their turns are coordinated. And it also includes right here our directional gyro or our heading indicator, which is uh, the two names for the same instrument. It tells us which direction we are going uh, in terms of north, south, east, or west. And then we have our vertical speed indicator, which helps us know if we are climbing or descending and how fast we are climbing or descending. Now, uh, we are going to get into each of these video, each of these instruments in future videos in much more detail. Uh, but for this, I just wanted to take some time to, we're actually going to fly the airplane around and see, you can see how these instruments interact with one another. So you can see when we're climbing, different instruments are going to do different things. And when we're descending, other instruments are going to do uh, different things. Um, and these instruments actually work together so that if all you really had, you couldn't look out the windows at all, and all you really had were these six instruments, you actually have a lot of information to help you fly the airplane. Now, I would never recommend, uh, and this video is not intended to be actual flight instruction, so please don't take it as such, but I would never recommend somebody flying an airplane off the ground just using these six instruments. You need to use uh, the other instruments, including radios and things like that, that uh, are for, intended for navigation in instrument conditions if you're going to try and uh, take off and land um, using instruments and the reality is even in instrument conditions we don't use the instruments to take us off of the ground or take us all the way back onto the ground we use them to get us very close and then we look outside of the cockpit to see the ground itself to see the actual runway and land the plane that so, way but what we're going to do today is we're actually going to take off in this Cessna 172 and we're going to fly around for a little while just to show you what it looks like on the instruments when we fly the airplane so I'm going to bring the power up you can see the tachometer down below coming up. That is not part of uh, one of the uh, instruments, what not part of the six pack of instruments. Now you can already see my directional gyro came alive there. And what that means is my airplane is actually turning a little bit on the ground, which is not what we want. We want to keep going straight down the runway. Uh, and on the top left corner, you can see my, uh, my airspeed indicator is already coming alive. Uh, I am picking up some airspeed here. And we're going faster. And what we want to see is my airspeed coming up fast enough that I'm going to be able to uh, pull up and leave the ground. Bringing my nose up a little bit. And you can actually hear my stall warning going off because I was trying to lift off the ground a little early. But there you go. Now my airspeed is coming live. 
and I'm up coming up on 60 knots and you can see on my attitude indicator on the top center that we are showing a climb attitude so that orange line is showing up in the blue area now if you look down to the bottom right we have the vertical speed indicator up uh, just over that 10 marker and that actually means we are climbing it over a thousand feet per minute um, and that's a pretty steep climb so we're going to point the nose down just a little bit on the attitude indicator and if you look at the top right corner we have the altimeter turning and uh, that shows that we are climbing up over 2,000 feet above sea level uh, assuming we have the Coleman window set correctly which we'll talk about more we are climbing and we are not turning at all but we are climbing uh, going straight and you can look in the bottom center uh, we are almost heading in a northerly direction so what I'm going to do I'm going to turn the aircraft a little bit to the right and we're going to head out to the east so I am in a about a 15 degree bank turn right now <clears throat> and you can see the heading indicator on the bottom center is turning to the right and when it gets over that E that means we'll be heading in a heading of a 090 or east and when we get to that point we're going to roll the wings level again by turning to the left there we go so you can see on the heading indicator or the attitude indicator on the top uh, we are now level again our wings are level and we're con continuing to climb but we are now on a more uh, we are on an easterly heading we're heading to the east uh, climbing out we've just crossed 3,000 feet which you can see on the altimeter to the right so what I'm going to do is I'm, we're going to climb out here to 5,000 feet and we'll do a 180 degree turn and um, fly to the west <clears throat> at 5,000 feet and then we'll maybe descend from there just to show you what our airplane is capable of doing. Continuing to climb and you can see on our airspeed indicator on the top left that right over here on our airspeed indicator that our airspeed has really stopped climbing or stopped moving much we're we're creeping up on about 75 knots right here and that's because once we get ourselves set up in a stable climb our airspeed will 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 settle in to the if we keep the same attitude generally speaking our airspeed will settle into a good a solid airspeed and it won't be changing very much uh, but if we change our attitude and we point the nose down I'll show you this right here we'll, we'll decrease our, our angle of attack it's called you'll see the airspeed come up but then again if we point the nose back up which we can see on the attitude indicator you'll see the airspeed come back down you can also see again on the bottom right corner that vertical speed indicator that as we bring the nose up and down, our vertical speed changes significantly too. So about a thousand feet per minute right there. And our airspeed's coming up too. Now we're approaching, if you look at the top right corner again, our altimeter, we are coming up on 5,000 feet. So we're going to point the nose down a bit and level off. Try and get the nose, uh, get the altitude to climb all the way up to 5,000 feet. Right up uh, there, so we're going to level off, and we've crept a little bit away from an, our easterly heading, so we're going to turn to the left, and I'm going to back some power off, because you can see our airspeed is coming up pretty fast here, so I'm going to back off a little bit of power, down about 2200 RPM, and we're making our left turn, and we hope to roll out of our left turn on a westerly heading. You can see both on our attitude indicator and our heading indicator on the top center and bottom center that we are in a turn. See, these, these instruments work together to show us what's actually going on around us outside the airplane. Again, I wouldn't recommend flying like this on only instruments without an instrument rating because there's a lot more that needs to be done uh, when we're flying to uh, make sure that we are safe and secure uh, away from other aircraft and things like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce our power down to let's say 1500 RPM and we're going to set up 
let's go to 1700 RPM actually, and we're going to set up for what we might do if we were going to get ready to land the airplane. So I'm actually going to bring the nose up a little bit, and because of our reduced power, um, our airspeed is going to start to drop. And I'm going to let that airspeed settle in at maybe, six, let's aim for 60 knots. And that is going to, for, you can't feel this here, but it, this is forcing me to pull back on the control a bit more because of our reduced power. So you can see what's happening now is as I try and get it settled in at 60 knots, I pull up a little bit, the airspeed will come down. But even though I got nose high attitude, we are descending. If you look at our altimeter, we're actually going down, not up. Even though our nose is high, we are going down. And that's because we reduce the power and we are working on descending. So I hope you can see from this relationship between these instruments that the six pack is actually a very helpful grouping of instruments. It helps us to see what's going on outside the airplane. Are we turning? Are we climbing? Are we turning to the left, to the right? Are we climbing? Are we descending? How fast are we flying? How high are we flying? Which direction on the map are we going? Uh, are our turns coordinated so that we're flying in a way that we're not going to stall the airplane? All this information is super important uh, and these instruments work together to give us this information so we can fly safely. Well, I hope that video on the Instrument 6 pack was very informative for you to help you understand what those instruments are and what each of them does. Not a great detail, we'll get into that in future videos. But if you like that, I also have another video uh, that goes into the details of what it takes to get a private, private pilot's license. Uh, if you are interested in uh, getting involved in aviation, whether you want to actually get yourself certified as an FAA certified private pilot, or you just love the world of aviation and are curious about what that process is like, uh, you can click on the link on this video to find out what it takes to get a private pilot's license. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching.